Welcome back everybody. So today we're going to look at some painting techniques. I think it's best we start with watercolour today, so that's what I've prepared for you. The paints that we're working with today, they're things that you can easily get from a stationery store or a newsagent or an art supply. So don't worry if you don't have too many art materials, you really only need a few things for this workshop, which I'll go through with you in a minute. We're going to start off by learning how to outline things and learning how to give things some depth and some nice shape, give them some nice effects. And then we're going to move through a couple of different objects that we'll paint and we'll end up with a nice little portrait. So I hope you really enjoy this workshop. I think it's something that you can easily do at home and I hope that you'll learn how to translate these skills to painting things that are really important to you. So here are the materials that we're going to use for today's painting class. You don't need all of these things, um, but whatever you do have is fine. These are just a little watercolour set. You can see it's got quite a few colours there that you can mix. I have got a few different brushes, a couple of flat ones and a small pointy one. I've got some gold paint because I really like gold, but it doesn't matter if you don't have this, that's fine. Got pencils for outlining, and this is just another set of watercolours. So watercolours, they can come in either tubes or in the flat palette. Doesn't matter which one you use. The tubes you can get a bit of a thicker colour, but with the dry palettes you can build that up. So either of those are fine. So, oh, of course you'll need some paper too. So why don't we pause now? Go and get your materials and perhaps a couple of little objects that you really like that you can try and paint. I'm going to show you something simple to start with. I'm going to do a painting of a wand. You can see here I did a little sketch of it earlier just to familiarise myself with the shape. So let's have a look at this wand. It's quite long. It's like a stick, it's also like a really long cone shape and then you can see it's got some details along it. So there's only a few materials that we need for this wand. I've got a little watercolour palette. See it's got a few different browns and a grey. I have got two flat brushes, one pointy brush, whatever you've got is fine. And I've just got an orange watercolour pencil which I'm going to use to draw the outline. Okay, so let's get started. Alright, so to start I've got my orange watercolour pencil and I'm just going to give myself a nice outline where the shape is. Near the top of the page, not too close to the bottom. It's really rough, just a long stick shape. It's partly curved at the end. Okay, now that's quite messy, but it doesn't matter. We're going to come back in now. So I'm going to start with this light brown colour. Because remember, if we start light, we can always come back and add the dark. But it's a bit trickier if you do it the other way around. Very rough, just getting the shape in. Okay, so I've got my shape in now. I'm going to come along with a, a brush that's a little bit smaller and a colour that's just a little bit darker. So more this mid-brown colour here. And I'm just going to do a little outline around the edge. You can see I've got just a slightly thinner brush. And I'm going to go all the way around. You can see that colour's already looking a lot richer just because it's got two different colours now mixing together. Just need a tiny bit of water and then down the other side. So I've done my outline now. You can see it's darker around the edges. It's time to come in and fill in a few of those vine patterns that go around the wand. Keep with the same colour for now. But then we'll add the darker colour later. So the vines, they're really just a series of lines that wrap around the wand. So if you just come along, imagine a vine twisting around, sort of spiralling around. It's 
keep following that pattern. Add a couple of little leafy shapes. So you can see now I've been through and added my vine pattern in the ready brown, slightly darker brown colour. So now I'm going a little bit darker again and I'm going to come in and do some shading around this pattern so and around the edges. Make it look a bit more three-dimensional. And this I'm using a nice thin brush too if you have one. Thin brush is really nice for details. I'm just following the lines that I made earlier with the vine pattern. Notice I'm being a lot more careful with this top layer. The first layers, you really just want to get the rough idea of the shape and the space that you're using. When you're getting to the top layer, it's really about putting that detail in. So you can see now I've finished outlining in the darker brown watercolour. What I'm going to do now is get a little bit of metallic gold acrylic um, and a little bit of white and just pop on some highlights. If you don't have gold you could use um, yellow or you could mix a little bit of um, the brown with a bit of white. You could also use a gold pen. You can see I'm putting that gold there now. It looks really nice. Just gives it a bit of shine. Don't be afraid to mix up materials. Sometimes that's when you can get some really lovely results. I'm just adding a couple of little highlights here. Make it look a bit more magical. There we go. Once it's dry, you might like to come back in. You could go over it in with some pen marks or some even finer brushwork. It's really up to you. There we go. In little gold bits. Just going to pop a little bit of white. And there you are, there's our first quick little painting of a wand. I've got another object now which I thought was really sweet and a good thing to practice in terms of shapes for painting. This is a little llama planter and you can see here we've got a circle here, cylinder there, we've got another kind of oval shape here and a couple of cylinders there. And the other thing thing that's going to be really fun to paint are these lovely colors and patterns here. So we'll give this a go again with some watercolors. I'm going to do the outline of my little llama in blue. So just looking at the llama we talked about that cylinder there. We've got a little circle for a head. This is just a watercolor pencil to give us the shape before we start painting. We've got the body, the oval there, and little legs. And we've got a couple of little ears up the top. And then there's this little body here where the planting goes. I'm just going to block out this area where we've got the pattern. And what I'm going to do is come back in, just adjust that because the llama's face is a bit finer than that. And we've got the ears. Now, I've got a tiny little tail, which is very cute, a little stumpy tail there. There we go, we've got our basic shape. Now you would have seen before, the little llama is mainly white, but if we do white on white paper, it's not going to look super exciting. So what I've decided to do is paint her in a pale blue colour, because I think that will look really nice. 
The other option, of course, is that you could do the background a different colour and paint the llama white. So I'm just using my little watercolour palette again here. It's my little watercolour palette, just a few colours. The other thing you can do is wet the paper a bit, just to see how that changes the way the paint sits on there. Okay, got a couple of lines. Don't worry if it's messy, it's all part of the fun. Now you can see I'm just, if you want a thin line, use the edge of your brush that way. And if you want it, that's good for outlining. So I've blocked in my outline for the little llama in blue, you can see. So if you remember, it's actually a little planter and I'm going to now put the, it's very tiny, the plant, but I'm going to just plant those little, uh, plant draw those little leaves in because they're green and the dirt's going to be black we want to get those in first so it's very tiny so I'm just going to do rough there we go it's actually a little string of pearls so we'll do some little things like that now we're going to come back and put in the soil which I'm using black for this might do a little bit of brown on it as well I think do a few different marks in there because we know soil's got lots of different textures so just add those in now the other thing that's black on this little llama is a little eye there we go and put a little bit of brown in the soil too just to give it a bit more depth Just got some fresh water because the little llama's um, saddle has got lots of different coloured patterns on them and some of them are lighter. I've got yellow in the centre, so I'm going to start off with that yellow diamond. Paint that in. So we'll paint in the green and then we'll do the blue over the top of the green because again the blue is darker and the green being under the blue is going to look nice. It'll just give that blue a bit more richness. Okay, so we've done the green. Next we've got some little blue chevrons. Now, we might do that line underneath first. Just got to be careful here that this is not too wet. We'll do the little chevrons on top. This little pattern. I'll do a little outline here just to give it a bit more definition. Little zigzags here. We've got some red in the centre. So there's a little red symbol. I'm just using a thinner brush here. Put that red in. Looks nice against the yellow. I'm going to put a few little dots here. There's another little red cross shape here and here. And next, we're just going to put the little tassels. There's little blue tassels down the bottom, and we'll just do those again with a fine brush. So, this tassel, we'll start with a dot there. Oh, she's looking very cute. going to put another outline along here and along here and there we go we've got a little watercolor of a llama so our last painting for today is going to be this little squishy mellow it's a nice easy shape to paint and you can see I've just already marked out the shape I have got my little watercolour palette. So 
So we've basically got a nice big egg shape. Got a white pouch at the bottom. Let's mark that in. Little nose area. Two eyes. So we're going to come in with a darker colour now. Just a little bit of a darker brown. You can just go in and fill in all of this darker area here. So it's time to come and fill in the darker area of the squishy mallow. You can see I'm just dabbing my brush like that to give a bit of texture. So it is quite velvety and we just want to give a little hint of that. And I'm just going to dab all over that darker area. And we can always come back and work into it again later. we go so I've colored in the light brown areas of the squishy mellow now I'm going to fill in the nose you could do them black if you want you could do them a darker brown blue really doesn't matter it's up to you so the nose is just a little triangle shape here and then there's a little mouth, a bit like a cat that comes down. There we go, a little bit of black in there. Next we're going to outline the little pouch. So that's quite a lot lighter. I'm just going to get a bit of light brown on my wider brush and make a little mark across like that. Just going to do that just to give the idea of the velvety fur again. There we go. And we'll come back and neaten it up. So what I've done is I've just come and done a couple more layers of the pale brown paints. And you can see how that's really given this little lady some extra texture. I also put some pale brown around here just so we can see that sort of nice velvety texture of her pouch. So I think the next thing to do is a background. So this is something we haven't done before yet, but I think blue and brown look fantastic together. So what I'm going to do is paint some blue around the background. Now backgrounds, you can do anything with you want. You could do something crazy and patterned. You could do something metallic. You could put drawing in the background, whatever you like. I'm just gonna do a nice sort of ultramarine blue around the back. So you can see now I've put a little bit of a background, like a little portrait of this little creature. It's ultramarine blue and now what I'm doing just for a bit of extra depth is I found some old um, metallic cyan paint. I'm just going to add a little bit of that on top to make it a bit shiny, a bit more fun. Let's pop that around there. we go got a nice background now okay so i've just got a little bit of gold here and i'm just going to do a little bit of gold around the pouch to lighten it up there you go a bit of gold highlights around the ear there and the pouch Pretend there's a little bit of light reflecting. A 
And again, all these paint, you can use the paintbrush however you like. Just get a bit of nice texture in there. A bit of texture on the nose too. she's nearly ready. Just coming back again to just touch up a few little details with a fine brush. With the browns we can see the velvet. There we are you can see now I've tidied up added a bit more depth and made my background a bit bigger. It's up to you how big you make the background. You could fill the whole page or you might just want to do a little section. So I've made it a nice metallic blues and now I'm just going to pop some stars in the sky for some finishing touches. Just a little, oh this star's gone a bit big, just little dots with a fine brush. You could do this with a stick as well. You could do it with a white marker. That would work too. Oh, she looks very sweet. Well, thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope you really enjoyed today's workshop and hope to see you soon.